Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's Sheep Industry Fund Public Meeting webinar. I'm Eleanor Anir, the Assistant Director at Food and Wine in Persa, and I'm chairing the session today. Uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands across the state in which, uh, on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island, Islanders people who are present today. Um, I'd like to hand over, I think, directly to Casey um, so that she can uh, take you through uh, the update to the Sheep Industry Fund Management Plan today. Sure. Oh, thanks, Eleanor. Um, welcome to the meeting. The purpose of today's meeting is to re uh, present the revised Sheep Industry Fund Management Plan 21 uh, through to 2526. Uh, a copy of the management plan is on the available on the PERSA website now. It's um, at the link uh, there. Um, the plan uh, doesn't uh, have too many changes this year, but, and I'll highlight, I'll, I'll highlight any of those as we go through. Uh, in terms of the agenda today, I'm just going to go through a little bit about the fund, uh, then uh, walk you through the plan um, and present it, and uh, there'll be time for some questions at the end. So just some um, general information about the fund. Um, the fund, the Sheep Industry Fund is established under the Primary Industry Funding Schemes Act 1998, um, which uh, is an act that makes provision for um, funds, uh, establishing funds for primary industry purposes and um, other funds as well, and um, other purposes as well. It sets high level requirements for establishing the fund, for contributions to the fund, um, how to apply the fund, um, the management plan and the annual reporting uh, in particular. Um, it uh, sets, so all the requirements for the management plan that we're presenting today are actually in the Act, uh, and specifically that the Minister must ensure that management plans are prepared for the fund and presented at public meetings like the one we're having today. Uh, it also sets that the management plan must cover a five-year period and must be revised and presented at least once every 12 months. Uh, the, um, the fund itself is established by its own regulation. There's currently 15 funds that are established under the Act and the Sheep Industry Fund regulations um, are yeah, listed there on the screen. And the regulations um, establish the fund, set the fund administrator, uh, state what the fund will consist of, and then all the specific rules relating to contributions to the fund, refunds, um, and how the fund can be applied or what it can be used for. Just some specifics about the Sheep Industry Fund. It's um, administered by the Minister. The contribution rate is currently 67 cents per sheep, which uh, comprises uh, two components. One is um, 55 cents per sheep, which is a general contribution rate, and a 12 cent per sheep um, contribution rate that is specific to funding the dog fence rebuild. Uh, contributions are payable um, by or on behalf of the vendor of the sheep. Um, and when I say on behalf of, that's when um, they can be the contributions can be collected by stock agents, um, abattoirs, or also any anyone who carries on a business for involving the purchase of sheep for slaughter or the sale of carcass. Um, that could be um, a butcher. So we'll move on to presentation of the management plan itself. Um, this uh, update has been um, completed in consultation with Livestock SA um, and, and specifically the Sheep Industry Fund Board that's established under Livestock SA. Um, following that consultation, the plan was approved by the Minister and now we're now presenting it um, at the public meeting in accordance with the requirements of the Act. Um, the um, plan starts with a bit of an introduction on um, general aspects of the fund, and I've just covered that in my little um, explanation about the fund. So we'll move on to the next part of the management plan, uh, which is the estimate of contributions. So the estimate of contributions is something that is updated every year. Uh, it's updated um, based on, um, yeah, our history of contributions into the fund, as well as we've got a model that we um, also use some data that's available, some forecasting data that's available to, um, to model how we um, expect contributions to change over the coming five years. Uh, so in this, um, yeah, the, the estimates this year are that sheep sales will um, increase um, steadily over the next five years uh, and from, yeah, 6.1 million up to 6.6, .6, nearly 6.6 .6 million in 25-26. Um, 
uh, so yeah, I just wanted to stress the figures in this table um, and the, the sheep sales that it's based on um, are estimates only. They, they are going to be, they're subject to being impacted by seasonal conditions and anything else that may happen. Uh, the impact can impact sheep sale numbers. Um, they're based on the best and the most recent data that we've got available. Uh, and we review those and update them every year. So uh, they, change, they change year to year based on the best data that we've got available. Um, this table, the format of this table has changed since last year. We've now um, outlined the specific components relating to the 12 cent dog fence rebuild contribution and how much um, money that's forecast to bring into the fund. Um, then the second part looks at the general contribution rate and then provides the total estimate at the bottom. Um, and that's just to um, delineate the fact that the dog fence rebuild contribution is really um, available for that specific purpose. Um, whereas general contributions are available for a number of other, other um, things as prescribed in the regulations. Uh, I also wanted to highlight that, um, that the dog fence um, rebuild contribution rate is forecast to um, be required up until a point in probably 24, 25. Um, again, this is something that we mo we monitor very regularly um, and, uh, and will update in the management plan on a yearly basis as to where our forecasts are showing us that the industry funding target will be met. Um, at the moment, it's looking like that will be in sometime in 24, 25 that the industry funding target will be met and therefore from 25, 26, that contribution rate will drop to, to zero or is forecast to drop to zero. The next part of the plan um, is relates to investment of the fund. This is the standard statement that is um, in all our industry fund management plans. Uh, and it says that PERSA administer the financial operations of the fund on behalf of the minister in accordance with the regulations and the Public Finance and Audit Act. Uh, contributions are invested in a separate interest bearing account at the Department of Treasury and Finance and interest is paid monthly on the monies that are held and that's treated as income into the fund. Uh, there's a minor change with this one this year. Um, previously, interest has been paid quarterly. It's now being paid monthly. So we've just um, reflected that in the management plan this year. Uh, on to the purposes of the fund. Um, the purposes of the fund are um, prescribed in the regulations. Uh, and I've summarised them um, here. There's been no change, change to this. Um, and in fact, the management plan is a straight read from the regulations, but in summary, um, it can be applied for rebuilding any portion of the dog fence, um, for maintenance or improvement of the dog fence, uh, for uh, on advice of a body that in the opinion represents, uh, that in the opinion of the minister represents sheep producers payments to that body. Um, well, just highlight that one is that's the um, one that a majority of the funds uh, go uh, out under at the moment um, to um, this year to Livestock SA. Um, so D is around payments for other purposes for the benefit of sheep producers. There is the repayment of contributions, which we often will talk about as being refunds. Um, and also the uh, regulations enable the payment of expenses of administering the fund. So there's more detail um, in the wording that's, uh, um, that's in the management plan. I've just sort of paraphrased um, the regulations there. Um, the next section of the management plan goes on to um, outline the investment priorities. Um, these are priorities that have uh, been developed by industry. Um, previously dating back to um, the advisory group when that was around um, and now are still um, are still current and we've worked with the Sheep Industry Fund Board um, to, to discuss and consult on them and um, they're, they believe they're still current. So uh, there's been no change to these this year. Um, again, there's more detail in the management plan, but it outlines the investment priorities as being um, animal health, traceability, predator control, advocacy and industry development. Um, and if you um, have a look at the projects that have been funded and that information is available via the PERSA website and also via the page on the Livestock SA website, um, you'll see that the way the fund is applied and the projects that are funded all fall under those investment priorities. The management plan actually also, before I go on to... Um, yeah, sorry, I skipped out the ineligible and ineligible activities um, in that section um, are also outlined in the management plan. I won't go through them today, but they're listed, they're listed there. They and um, yeah, talk about um, the criteria as well that um, activities funded will be assessed against and um, clearly outline the types of activities that are ineligible for funding under the sheep industry fund. 
the next section is to do outlines funding guidelines. Um, so all of these guidelines under this section apply only to payments that are made under Regulation 7C, which are the payments to um, a body that in the opinion of the minister represents sheep producers. Um, as I mentioned before, currently for this year, it's um, Livestock SA fulfills that um, purpose. So the eligible organisations are um, yeah, outlined there, they also must be a legal entity. They're the two requirements. Um, the minister must um, have approved that they represent sheep producers and they must be a legal entity. Um, in terms of the application process, um, the eligible organisation may request a payment from the fund via an application in May each year. Um, there, is a, the, there is some uh, provision in there that the Minister may consider um, applications for funds at other times if that was needed and if there were um, extenuating cir circumstances surrounding that. Um, and the management plan also sets the um, application requirements as well in terms of what needs to be, what needs to be in the application. The um, applications are assessed and approved by the minister as administrator of the fund. And that includes checking that the proposed activities comply with the regulations um, and um, the management plan and, and that they're also within the expenditure authority that's for the fund as well. Um, and if approved, then the organisation um, is then required uh, or expected to undertake the activities that were outlined in their application. And also there's a requirement for them to also post the details of those projects or activities on their website so that that's publicly available for all contributors to view. Um, the management plan sets out also that the amount that is available for payment um, from the fund under that regulation 7C to a representative body um, and it, uh, the main requirements are that it cannot can't receive, uh, exceed the fund balance. Um, there is some further information in the plan um, as well around how um, how that amount is calculated, and also outlining that where possible and um, subject to seasonal variability in the sheep sales as well, that a closing balance of um, one year of contributions is maintained in the fund at the end of the financial year, uh, and that's uh, supported by um, the Sheep Industry Fund Board and Livestock SA as well, and recognising that it assists in managing variability in income. It provides a reserve to draw on in case there is unforeseen circumstances, and it can also assist in managing refund payments. Toward the end of the funding guidelines, um, it outlines the reporting requirements, that there's a progress report due um, at the end of January and an annual report at the end of July from um, an ineligible organisation. Um, and also the payment terms that um, that organisation can expect. Um, so this one has had a, a, a change this year, uh, only a slight change. It's, and it recognises now the management plan or content in the management plan um, outlines and clarifies that the payments under that regulation to industry representative bodies are GST exclusive. Um, and to assist um, in managing that, we've also we have uh, shifted or increased the um, percentage of the payment that's paid out in July or as soon as the um, as in, within 30 days of when the application is approved to 50%. So it's 50% in July, 30% in October and 10% in uh, February and April. The final part of the management plan um, deals with some um, more administrative um, matters. So the first one is um, around grievances that any concerns about the use of the fund, fund can be raised in writing with the minister. It also sets a process for changing uh, both the general contribution rate and the dog fence rebuild contribution rate. Um, and finally outlines the annual schedule for updating the management plan. Um, the main sort of uh, dates to be or things to be aware of a consultation commences usually towards the end of the calendar year from October. Um, through to December, we finish that off um, by finalising the plan uh, in January and aim to hold the public meeting annually in March. Um, we just missed March this year. Um, so that's um, the end of my presentation about the management of the plan, um, presentation of the management plan. Um, and I wanted to open up if there were any questions. Okay, thanks, Casey. Um, just checking in with um, Ian and Jody. There's no um, questions come through chat or Q and A section. Uh, no questions at all. Yep. Okay. Okay. I think um, uh, happy then to conclude the meeting. Thank you, everyone, for attending. 
um, and um, move on uh, to uh, launching that the, the uh, management plan will go live on our website available to um, anyone that wants to look it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. If anyone does have any questions, uh, my contact details on the screen. They're also on the PERSA website. Um, and um, yes, so you can send me, send me questions if you have any after the meeting. Mm -hmm.